Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the industry and where it's at today, where it's been, where it's going. Uh, as always, we love talking to you guys about anything and everything in the tattoo um, world. We're going to be talking uh, a little bit about knowledge is power. So remember that if you guys are just starting to tattoo and you're just learning a couple things, tuning into our lives, you're going to learn a lot about the psychology of the industry, you know, just little things that um, will really help you become successful um, with your pro with your product knowledge and just in, in terms of just, you know, you know, how to um, how to navigate through the changing times of the industry and, you know, what's going on with that. Good. Uh, the, what's the, the news for today? James, you want to share the good news well, about Japan? Man, uh, we got word from our brother, Mr. Traveling. James on? On? Yep, there we are. Hey, guys, how you doing all at home? I'm here with my man, Mr. Tom Martinez. And Wait, real quick. Can I interrupt? Oh, please do. Tom, before you get into the juicy uh, gossip of Japan and tattooing being legal, Tom, t explain our, our new camera system. Um, yes. So, um, yeah, now we have a couple angles now. So we could go mm -hmm. straight to Franco, mm -hmm. or we can come back over here. Uh, and also, we, we've actually got some new, just some new tech. It's, it's something that's actually accessible to people at home just do a little bit of research and uh, um, yeah overall it's it's just something to just help you know production value and uh, cool. help uh, kind of interact with people a little bit better so can yeah. we see Dylan and, and Andy in the yeah. background hey, hey, we, we got the gang here. here we, we got we got the marketing department in here so <laughs> what up everybody all right James what's up no. with Japan dude? well I mean as uh, I, as everybody has seen whether on our Facebook on Instagram um, you know we helped when our brother Mick uh, traveling Mick out of uh, Germany was able to break the news that tattooing is no longer illegal in Japan. So that in itself is a big victory. Um, I know Franco, you guys were all going back there. Uh, you were there yeah. when they were during some of the uh, hearings, correct? Yep, yep. We happened to be there when they were. This was like two years ago when they were. Um, we were waiting for to see if the government was going to appeal it. Mm -hmm. and I think the day before we left, we were up there with Mick and um, and Sana and um, Shige, and it was like hopefully they don't appeal it, but then they appealed it. Yeah. So now they're not, and they agreed not to. So Japan's that's if you haven't been to Japan, the rich tattoo culture that Japan has had for many many years is really really cool. Um, it, Japan is a staple in the framework of the of modern day tattooing. Um, especially with body suits and big pieces and just the overall flow and how to flow a big piece onto a body with muscle structure. Uh, the Japanese um, have had that down pat for, for a long time before before a lot of us. Um, so yeah, that's exciting and especially like there's uh, some opportunities for some conventions over there and different things like that. So thanks again Mick, Traveling Mick, for uh, breaking the news first. Um, Always it's gonna happen. be. It's really gonna be cool to see. You know, for so long, so much of that beautiful art has been kept under wraps, mm -hmm. just for fear of, you know, people looking at you, just being judged out in society. And so, yeah. when when people are gonna be able to show that off, and the beautiful artwork, and and mm. just seeing the lineage and and the, it's like tattooed people that have people that are heavily tattooed in Japan. It's like they have to play that game. Like I don't want my mom to see. Everyone's always covering up. You can't go into the bathhouses. I mean, when I was there, I wanted to go into the bathhouses, but I couldn't because I had tattoos. Um, so hopefully things start to get less prejudiced with, with tattooing because we all know it's an art form now. Um, and speaking of that, that's kind of what our uh, topic is going to be about, about where the industry is at now compared to where it was. Um, for me, it's been 27 years that I've been tattooing, so I come from an era where grandma didn't like the fact that I was tattooing parents didn't really dig it um, it was weird people would be like what do you mean you tattoo like real ones like oh I thought only bikers and, and you know sailors and gangsters had those things what are they how do they get done so it wasn't accepted when I first started and anyone that's been tattooing for 27 20 even even probably like 18 even as, as far back as then you guys remember that it was our desire that everybody would one day accept tattooing for the art form that we know it is. But it just wasn't that way for a long time. Um, I was always proud of it though. I didn't care what people thought. Um, and they didn't, they thought it was just, you know, weird. But here we are nowadays, it's exploded. Now everyone can't wait to tell people that their nephew or their son or their uncle or, you know, their daughter is tattooing, everyone's tattooing, everyone wants to get into tattooing. 
Um, so it's like everyone, people like me who've been tattooing for a long time, we got what we asked for. We, it's, it's now accepted as a fine art form. Um, but what are your guys' thoughts? Like, what do you guys think about where the industry is? Kind of like hearing this about Japan kind of spurred this idea of what to talk about today. Um, I'll share a little bit about, if you guys have any questions about how the industry was, uh, I'm fortunate enough to have gotten into the industry 27 years ago. Guys like Jack Rudy and um, Freddie Negretti, of course, have been in it since the 70, 75. Yep. Um, you know, gosh, 20 plus, almost 19 years before I even got in. So we're, to, you know, these guys are like 47. Maybe we should try to call Jack in a little while. Yeah, send you Jack a text what? really quick. I will. I See will. if he's up for a quick call. We can check in with Jack Rudy if he's around. Um, so in general, um, it's very interesting times where we're at, especially throwing COVID into the mix. I feel like COVID is really making the cream of the crop rise to the top. And it kind of goes into last week's conversation is how to become successful. Um, more than ever, I, I remember, gosh, I started in 94. So I remember in like two, the early 2000s, if you did good, if you did good portraits, you were you were automatically going to be a fame. You were destined to be a famous tattoo artist in, in those days. Twenty years ago, if you were a good portrait artist, color black and gray, you were well known because there wasn't a lot of them. Nowadays, it's not the case. You could be just as good as one of the best, but if you're new, it's like people. For some reason, it's not that important, right? And 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 it's 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 just because people are now looking for brand names. They're looking for a Nico Hurtado tattoo a mr cartoon tattoo um so what it does is it it puts more pressure on some of you youngsters out there that just started um i'm all for the belief that anyone can make it it's just nowadays you guys got to try a little bit harder to make it um i'm interested in hearing some of your thoughts about you know some of the struggles that you guys are going through to you know make a name for yourselves in your in your hometown um, which leads to, you know, you could make more money to feed the family and whatnot. I think the end goal for every artist is to not be a starving artist. Um, but yeah, in general, we're here in 2020. We got COVID thrown in the mix, so it's really making it's a lot of shops are shutting down. Um, gosh, it's crazy how many shops are shutting down. Um, people that have been tattooing for a couple years have kind of given up on it because they're having a hard time making money right now. Um, so I think sometimes these hard times it's uh i don't know is it a bad thing dylan to uh for the cream to rise to the top when there's tough times is it what do you think no adversity especially in the creative form breeds creativity can you hear me yep yep yeah, yep. There we yeah. Go. i think i think the challenge is going to make some more creativity all good arts built in like traumatic moments if you think about it throughout mm -hmm. history yeah yeah like, really and if you think about that like is everybody really really afraid of a tough time to expose you to be greater or to expose you to be weaker? I mean, the choice is yours. Um, it's not our fault if you choose to be weaker. It's, 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 it's your loss. If you choose to take this adversity as a challenge, like I have, like we have, like some of the people that we talk to have, then you become greater. Um, so COVID's here in the mix of a booming industry called tattooing and it's I've heard so many mixed things from old timers like Good Time Charlie and Jack Rudy and I've, I'm hearing what the youngsters are saying. I think in general we're in a really strange time right now. Um, I really hope that people really keep the respect for the elders. Uh, I'm big on that, James. You know how big I am on respect Man, for the that's, elders. Hey, if it wasn't for Bill Russell, there would be no Shaquille O'Neal. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just as you look at it with. Charlie Cartwright, with Jack Rudy, with Freddie Negretti, you look at Tattoo Land out there in East LA, that was one of, you know, they brought that black and gray Chicano style to the masses. They were the ones that introduced it. So to think that it started there in this industry mm -hmm. to where it is now is unbelievable. I mean, I, I, I like one of the old adages, you're one decision away from a completely different life. And, and it's true, right? Like we've all, you know, there's people that make that one choice and they do 10 years in prison, right? But think about all the guys that came before us, like Jack Rudy and, and Freddie Negretti and Good Time Charlie and, you know, all the others. It's like, 
they're, those one-time choices that they made to become a tattoo artist to introduce fine line black and gray into the world when it wasn't there, um, those one-time choices changed all of our destinies some way, shape, or form, right? Um, it's like they say, when you take off from California and you're headed to Hawaii, if you're one inch to the left off, you're going to end up in Japan. So it's like, it's easy to think, oh, this we would have probably been here if it wasn't for our elders. I don't think that's the case. You know, because we're everyone's one decision from a completely different life, and that when when you when you change your life, when things happen, it, it extends into the future. You know, so um, let's let's get into some questions, James. Um, well, we're we're still waiting for a couple questions here, but I actually have a question. You know, as we're talking okay. about the tattoo industry, um, you know, you you look at how the evolution of the machines, starting with coils. Now you look at a lot of that fine line work that these guys are doing now on that realistic scale. Was that a possibility? Like when you first started tattooing, were the portraits coming out the world the way they are now? Because you were one of the master portrait artists in this area, which was you know the home, the mecca. So with so seeing cool. everybody out there nowadays, do you think that the machines or or the technology for the instruments, the equipment? Do you think that played in anything in helping to definitely turn, turn the art to? I mean, a now? good a good example is is this new documentary coming up, the designer skin. Like a lot of the stories they're telling is how tattooings went from, you know, like the sailor days of, of some thick, you know, fourteen round liner roses, you know, or pinups and a little bit of shading compared to like a Carlos Torres back piece or a. You know, it, you know, just like the fine art that it's become. Like literally, it's fine art underneath the skin. So I like how they're highlighting in this documentary how, like, what's changed? What's allowed these artists to um, be able to um, paint, you know, tattoos, and that's such a quality where it's fine art. You're talking Renaissance style paintings um, underneath the skin. It's it's pretty crazy. But yeah, the I think that's what that's what we love so much here at Bishop. We we love the fact that like we don't look at ourselves like a tattoo machine company or a tattoo supply company. We're a bunch of nerds at the end of the day. We're creative. We're just trying to figure out ways to help you guys deposit artwork underneath the skin. That's really what we're all about. How can we how can I as a machine builder um, make something that will help you translate? I always say like it goes from your brain, like you get a creative artist, right? And it goes from his thought and he knows the technique and then you got the skin, you got the client, right? The machine is like the translator. It's like the one that interprets my thoughts as a creative into the final piece. So that machine, you shouldn't have to fight with it. It should work flawless. It should, it should be precise. The movement should be precision, completely vertical movement, no side to side. Um, and then you can tell your story. So yeah, James, a lot of the a lot of the storytelling that we do as artists, because that's really what we are. We're storytellers. We're a company that we build products to help you tell your story, easy, translatable. Um, but yeah, the the machines and where they're going, especially with the wireless technology. God, I can't wait to uh, to show you guys what we've been working on and where we're going with that. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, even as you just mentioned the wireless, what was the change i mean when you were connected to your your power supply to now all of a sudden you have the like range of motion what what possibilities what okay so let me answer that question by exposing how old i am which <laughs> so tom come on tom you look you look like you used to be a smooth operator when you were single do you remember the days of like the long coily you're talking on the phone to your girlfriend and you got the phone in your room, but it's got the wire. Oh, yeah. Right? Remember those days? Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like, it sucks to be held down. It's like, oh, it only makes it to the bathroom. So I, I got to talk to you in the bathroom, babe, while I'm taking this <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? For an hour. But like, so I come from the days where everything wasn't wireless. The vacuum wasn't wireless. The phone wasn't wireless. Um, you know, there was no wireless toothbrush, power, power, power brush. It's so, it's like, I remember like that whole feeling. So it's definitely a, a sense of freedom, for sure. And I love how, and it's funny because this just, this just shows you how behind we are in the tattoo industry. It's not so much that myself or anybody making wireless tattoo machines, like we're not Tesla, we're not geniuses. Like I'll be the first to admit it. I mean, we're just late to the game. They've had 
wireless toothbrushes, battery powered toothbrushes for 10, 15 years, yeah. right? Battery powered razors. We're just, again, this is like, at the end of the day, the tattoo industry, especially myself, you know, it's like we're a bunch of guys that are creative inventing stuff or bringing things into the marketplace that are invented elsewhere into our industry, such as battery powered machines. Um, and, and at the end of the day, like, it's the tattoo industry isn't backed by a bunch of corporations. It's not like a, it's not like a razor company like Gillette, where it's this huge multi-billion-dollar corporation, and of course they can always stay on the cutting edge of technology. Um, for example, like when powered razors, when battery-powered razors came into the marketplace, those types of companies made them right away. Um, but for us, for myself, I'm just a tattooer, right? So I don't have that money backing me or even some of like the other people in the industry that are making power, like machines and power supplies and battery powered machines, you know, they're not, they're not coming from large financial backing. So it's just really a bunch of nerdy dudes like myself, just kind of like, fuck man, what are we doing tattooing with RCA cords? Let's, let's start making wireless stuff. It's about time. And, but then that's where we get to be creative and geeky. So like, I mean, like I said, the stuff we're working on and the stuff I've seen, it's just like, I can't wait to share it with everybody because, again, like my promise to you guys, as a tattoo artist and machine maker, is that anything that I make for you guys, it's it's really for me, right? It's got to pass my test, so I'm a picky, picky bastard. So I really make stuff for me, and then by default, if I like it, you guys get, get a crack at it. And that was the whole story of Bishop. It was really like... You know, we're talking 2006, 2005. I was toying with the idea of making a rotary machine in a in a non-rotary world, right? So think about that, man. I was thinking of rotary machines back when not only were they not popular, people did not like them. They didn't even like the the sound. They didn't even like to know that you were about to use something other than a coil. So, you know, back in those days when I toyed around with the idea of making a rotary, it was literally just how how can I make a machine that has all the things that I want? And then it became something that my peers wanted, my friends, my coworkers, and then that's that was really the story in the birthplace of Bishop. Um, it just was I wanted something for myself. I had no idea it would ever become a company. I had no idea that you know people would be wanting to buy these machines all across the world. It was just I love this machine. I personally can tattoo with it better than anything, and uh, it's a trip. But in general, that's uh, that's where the industry's going, James. Yeah, um, actually, we got a great question from Alex Mesa, and you guys, uh, if you have any questions at home, send them here on the messages, and we're going to go ahead yeah, and address them. Yeah, where are we going? We want to know what you guys think. Where is Absolutely. the tattoo industry going? What's your opinion? Um, where... We actually got a great question from our friend uh, Alex Mesa, and he's uh, asking, you know, as far as uh, tattooing, with everything that's going on with the private studio movement, and a lot of people going into their own personal yeah. places, do you see walk walk-in shops? Do you see the need for walk-in shops? That's a great future? topic. Let's park the let's park the car on this topic. So this is a good one. It used to be that like you would want to work in your favorite shop, like 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 a staple shop, like a well-known shop to me is Tattoo Land, right? Like, or even even like for me personally, I, I started working at a shop called LA Tattoo. Uh, Cartoon was was birthed out of that place. Uh, that was one of his spots he was birthed out of. Um, um, Mike Brown. Baby Ray, um, Double D, Dennis, Mike Arendane. I mean, that was a spot that a lot of dudes went through. L.A. Tattoo right there in Hollywood Boulevard mm -hmm. and Las Palmas. And I was there. I was there for a couple of years. And, like, I, I was like, I couldn't wait to get a job there. And I got a job there, and I felt like, damn, I finally made it. I'm here at, I'm here at the studio that, you know, that, that Cartoons at and, and all these other dudes went through, these legends. Um and then, you know, and even in Orange County, it's like you had Tattoo Land, like the godfather, Jack Rudy. It's like, oh, shit, you're working over at Tattoo Land? You must be someone special. So ultimately, everyone's looking to get validated. That's really the psychology of it, James. Everyone wants to get validated. The, the new system of validation is Instagram. So it's no longer, oh, if I'm working at so-and-so's shop, then I'm good because he only hires good people. Now what it is is people get validated by the amount of followers they have. Um, hopefully not the type of filters you guys are using, some of you out there. And you know who I'm talking about. I was just about to, I was going to But, ask but, but, um, yeah. don't use filters, okay? It's, it's, it's illegal in some countries. 
<laughs> especially <laughs> the United States. But that's the new form of validation. So you get validated by having a couple hundred thousand followers, maybe 70, 80,000 followers. You're doing nice tattoos. And so that's really the Yelp of the industry is, is Instagram, right? So what that's caused is it's caused people to no longer have to work at a popular studio. So then what's after that, right? Then it goes into how can I pay the cheapest rent? Okay, I don't have to work in a popular studio because I already have a following because I'm good and I have a lot of followers um, and I'm making a name for myself in my own hometown. So now what do I do? Okay, I'm just gonna go into a private studio um, and I'm just gonna work off of that platform and just have, have, you know, have, my, have my people find me through social media. And that's totally fine, I think, right? I mean, but what's weird about that is we used to come from this uh, idea of you have to work in a tattoo studio or you're a scratcher. It's like you can't work out of your house. You can't work in a you can't work in a one a, a one room space on the 30th floor in of an office building because it's not a tattoo studio. But I think now it's like what is a tattoo studio? What does that even mean anymore? Right? I mean, if you got your uh, bloodborne pathogens pathogens uh, certificate and you know how to not have cross contaminate and you have good hygiene and you know how to be clean um, and you're talented and you have good equipment yeah man I, I personally know some really famous tattooers that are tattooing out of their house uh, you know so um, that's a whole nother conversation so it's 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 now become harder to define what a scratcher is like what is a scratcher you can't say oh you work out of your house therefore you're a scratcher you can't say that anymore because then you name three or four badasses that work out of their house and it's like oh shit I, I didn't know they worked out of their house okay they're definitely not scratchers um, but in terms of where I think the industry is going with studios and you know what man James I would like to say we were one of the first to really get into this and and I give credit to two people for this Mr. Cartoon and my good friend Noah Elias um, the artist my, my teacher in, in airbrushing yeah. and, and what it was is I had I had the, the, the fast-paced walk-in shop, um, Orange County Ink House. I don't know if any of you know that spot, but that was a staple in Orange County. At the time, it was we were the only ones. It was us, Laguna Tattoo, and that was it in South Good Orange County. Good Time Charlie Tattoo Land. The nearest one south or north of us was Good Time Charlie's, and the nearest south to us was in Oceanside. But um, we had, it was popping, walk-ins every day. So many we couldn't even do. Um, we had to send them away. But... Um, so we had I had a busy walk-in studio and then I was tired of the commotion I wanted to have a little bit more privacy and so I went and got tattooed by cartoon and I loved how he was in this warehouse district but when you walked into cartoon studio it was an experience like you, you literally were like at Disneyland and you were you were on a ride you were you were wa you were you were walking up the staircase looking at all the all the photos from a step on Oriole um, looking at you know pictures of 50 Cent, Eminem, Beyonce, <laughs> Kobe, right? So it's, it's it's an experience. You're walking into this place that's like, damn, where am I? Like this is like this is in the hood. This is like this is this is Skid Row, downtown LA. And then you walk through the doors and it's a whole new experience. You got low riders and stuff. So I thought to myself, like, why do we need a walk in studio? Like everyone that's working with us is, is appointment only. We can't really do the walk ins you know. And at the time, this was about 15 years ago because we've been here for about 15 years at the time walk-in studios were still popular and, and it was still needed you still needed to be in a busy shopping center next to a Starbucks and a Ralph's um, to get to get good traction but anyhow like we made the move we went we, we moved into a warehouse district the rent was cheap um, we built it up to be crazy to where it is an experience yeah. and uh, for those that know you know uh, for those that don't know you're welcome to come check us out but it was kind of like, let's pay some cheap rent, let's get a big warehouse, but then let's build inside this dream house, this like fun little, uh, what's that, what's that, That's uh, our em the Emporium, the Shangri-La, yeah, and, and, and then just house it with artists that, and the reason why it's called the Vatican is because the Vatican, one of the reasons is because the Vatican, we've been to the Vatican before, the Sistine Chapel, and they house some of the best painters, paintings, all around, right, and so I felt like, this Vatican houses some of the best tattooers like like Alexis Batate, Mr. Trojan, Letitia, Dennis. Mondo, Dennis. Fuck, now I gotta Dakota. name them. Now I gotta name them all. Nakoda, um, uh, Devin. Devin. Oh, Ricardo Avila. Andrew. Oh yeah, Ricardo. Ricardo Avila. He's new to the team. Lewis, Lewis joined. 
yeah, he's he's a beast for sure. Um, but yeah, in, in general, like now, now it's like people just want to tattoo and save money. I get it. They don't need to be in a popular studio because now where we're at is it's all about Yelp. It's all about um, Instagram, social media. That's where you find your customers. It's beyond word of mouth now. So you don't need to be in a in a big studio. I I always used to tell people because at one time it was like if you were a tattoo artist, everybody at some point wanted to, to own their own studio. Can't knock them. It's an American dream. You, as long as you put in the time and you and you respect your elders and you respect the person that taught you, it's like yeah you can't knock them. But like those days are over. It, it, nowadays people are like not wanting to own their own studios as much as possible because. It's like, it used to be, I'm going to build a dope studio, spend a couple hundred thousand dollars building it out, and then people will want to work for us, and, or, or whoever. And nowadays, it's just not the case. People aren't willing to put in the money. Like, people aren't willing to be a Robert Foe. They're not willing to be a Robert Foe. And what I mean by that is Robert Foe from Skin Design, he's a triple platinum OG tattooer. You guys already know who he is. He's the kind of guy that can open up new shops and succeed because he's got the recipe he's he's not afraid to spend a lot of money on building out a beautiful place it's like the field of dreams if you build it what happens james if you build they it they will come if you build it they will come Absolutely. and so look my advice to you guys is it's it's we're in an all or nothing moment in life in every single industry personal you name it if you're going to build a studio it's got to be all or nothing um other other than that, what I would suggest, guys, is and this is this is good advice. Listen to what I'm saying. I've seen people succeed by taking this advice, and I've seen people suffer and become their own slaves by not taking this advice. What do I mean by your own slave? It's like you're a slave to your schedule. I've seen people booked out for a month or for a year and a half and like they can't do anything. No family vacations. They can't on a whim take a Saturday off and it's like it's crazy, you know. I was just having this talk this morning with Alexis, um, but like, in general, it's you want to be able to just concentrate on your brand. So my advice that I'm going to give you guys right now is, don't be so much in a hurry to open up your own studio, right, and spend all that money, and then have to go from an artist to a businessman, and then now you're like you're creating less tattoos, which means you're making less money. I'll give you an example. And I've seen this happen so many times over the years is people will open up a studio they'll put like a hundred grand into it so it's kind of all right right it's got new floors and new walls and now they have three people working for them and now they themselves are tattooing less because they have to manage the studio and deal with employees and you know we're we're artists we're difficult to deal with we're a bunch of sensitive bastards I know you guys are it's just like now that artist is scratching his head going I don't understand I used to make 10 grand a month tattooing full time now I'm tattooing half the time because I gotta run my studio that's now I'm making five grand a month so as an owner of a studio I simply lost five thousand dollars because I gotta manage everything and then they start to do the math and they're like wait a minute then I put a hundred grand into the studio I'm making five grand less a month managing I'm stressed the fuck out this isn't even what I want to do. I'm a creative. I just want to create tattoos and get paid. Like, I just want to paint. I just want to design shoes, right? You just want to create. So I think my, my advice really is understand who you are. Like, you're either a businessman or a, or a creative. Very rare can you combine the both. I'm one of them, and I'm not even going to suggest it because it's very stressful to live the, the kind of lifestyle I live, which is balancing business, balancing family, balancing my love for painting and my, my love for tattooing. Um, like I was just squeezing in a tattoo before before today's live and I didn't get to finish it because um, we're, we're doing this so but hey you know what it is what it is the trains moving full steam ahead in my life so there's no backtracking but I will give you that advice is understand who you are if you're a creative this is my gold advice right now instead of concentrating your time and money and efforts on opening a studio especially right now in today's days because there's thousands of tattoo artists right now today that are that don't know their next move they don't know their next move they're, they they either lost their shop they either were about to open and now they lost the lease because of what happened with covid and they don't know what they're going to do my advice is don't open a studio don't don't do that 
Instead, find someone you can work with, pay them rent, work out a deal, okay? And then spend that same amount of time and money and effort on growing your personal brand. Growing your personal brand, like Mr. Troshan has done over the last five years, like we've seen. Like Mr. Cartoon has done since the 90s. Decades. These are people that have worked on Esteban Oriol. These are people that didn't just become famous on accident. Cartoon used to say it takes 20 years to become an overnight success. These are people that have diligently worked on their brand because they knew something that other people didn't know. So that's my advice to you. Don't be so concerned to open up a studio and waste a bunch of time and money and lose yourself as a creative. Instead, invest in yourself, invest in your brand. Like your name and who you are is a brand. Whether that means coming up with your own logo, whether that means putting money into uh, into uh, advertising, whether you're advertising on Yelp or whether you're advertising on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram. There's so many ways. We, we'll talk about ways to brand. That's another good episode, James. We'll talk about ways to brand. I've learned a lot of stuff the hard way, and I've seen a lot of people become successful branding themselves the right way. But that's my advice is invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. It's a lot less stress. You get to go home at night and not have to worry about the bills getting paid. That's the owner of the shop's problem. And so that's kind of where we're at. Um, I, is there, are there any questions? We got, to we got some really great questions. Okay. In fact, um, this is from our friend uh, Miguel Talamantes. Uh, wants to know, with the evolution in the art form, how much further can realism get? You know, I mean, the, we're it's, almost at that point where it's like the tattoo's got to start breathing or pop out of your skin. Yeah, yeah, to... yeah. Okay, so it, it's 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 a question of what's impressive. It's not even a matter of re- realism anymore. Realism has reached its peak. I mean, I haven't seen colored portraits better than Nico. I mean, I have, and not really better. I haven't. Nico is like the cream of the crop, in my opinion, as a colored portrait artist, right? I. I haven't seen it get any better. Like, Nico's reached the top. People that can do tattoos like him have reached the top. Um, same with black and gray, right? Same with black and gray. Guys like Chewy Quintanar or... Um, uh, one person for sure pushing the envelope is David Vega. I mean, that dude came out of nowhere and... Se- I mean, the bar was already here, right? And then David Vega came out and just set the bar right here, you right? Pinch those babies' cheeks. Yeah. So he's he's a rare example of someone that came out of nowhere and set the fucking bar high, and you know like I didn't I didn't even think black and gray could get better, but it, he just achieved the softest grays and showed us that it's possible with color realism. I've seen some of the best stuff out. So yeah, James. I, I mean, we're getting to the top. We're getting to the top, right? So it, it becomes a question of what's impressive. What are people wanting to see? Like what? These little, these little chemicals that, that make us, you know, want to flip to different people's Instagrams and check out their work. Dopamine. Like, what's, what's stimulated? It's like you take aspirin every single day for your headache. Pretty soon you're going to have to take two. Then pretty soon you're going to have to start taking Percocets. You're going to get numb to it. You're going to get used to it. We're in that day and age where we're already getting used to the... We can scan and see the dopest tattoo. And literally people are just not impressed anymore. And it's not anything bad. It's like... Um, they're just not impressed because it's like, wh- why why would I be impressed if I see a dope portrait when I just looked at 50 today, and I looked at 50 yesterday, and I looked at 50 the day before, and last month I've, I've seen 200 just flipping on Instagram. So it's like a numbing process. It's the same thing the government's doing to us. They try to fuck us up by slowly feeding us bullshit, and then that way they just keep dropping more and more. Um, it's like the same thing. It's a, it's 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 little by little you become unimpressed. So exactly. James, it's yeah, a, it's, it's, it's a matter of it's a matter of what's new. Um, there was a guy, I, I don't even remember his name, but he was doing this cool combination of black and gray with color highlights. Um, that was one that stood out. There's another guy that is using sort of these patterns to. Anton, make it make it those half tones. Yeah, An- Anton. Uh, what's Anton? Our boy Anton Tonic out there in Germany. Anton Tonic. Ooh. If you haven't seen his stuff, he's doing like <laughs> dots, like half tones, to create like a realistic image. If you're looking at it from far away, and he, and he, he does a really good job. I mean, I wouldn't do that if you paid me. It's freaking it's so time consuming. So, kind of where I'm at with that is is. It's no longer a realism thing, James. It's no longer how can I become a realistic artist to become famous or to make money. It's now um, 
what can I do? I remember Bobby Tribal taught me this a long time ago. It was uh, when I when I was trying to do paintings and sort of stand out. Um, it was how, he he said to me. He goes, Franco, it doesn't matter if you paint good portraits. No one cares. And he goes, no one cares. There's there's millions of there's thousands of people out there that can paint good portraits. No one cares. What can you do to be a Basquiat? What can you do to to stand out? What can you do to like 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 a, a good example is um, uh, what's his name? Um, Michael the olive painter. Michael uh, uh, Goddard. Michael Michael Goddard. Right. Like here's a guy that was a number one selling American artist for two years in a row. Number one, and he was doing olives. Now was he painting like Caravaggio? No. But he sold more paintings than Caravaggio, by far, and, and it was because he found a niche. And so what Bobby Tribal was telling me was, "Hey Franco, you got to find that your magic recipe that people respond to. It's the same as music. We've all heard good music, but it just never makes it. It's never popular. Then you come out with a sound like Deftones, right, Tom? Or you oh, yeah. come out with a sound like Johnny Cash's voice or Lil Wayne with that raspy <laughs> voice. Now you're talking your niche. Now you're talking like something about that person stands out." and they're talented and that's really the next evolution for tattooing so if you guys are listening take this um information to heart because um james can you grab that yeah got my little daughter calling me she doesn't know about the facebook fridays but like <laughs> that's really important um to to really know that you have to stand out the goal guys is no, it's it's yeah you want to get good but then you want to stand out so that's kind of where it's at right now is how can you stand out as a good tattoo artist if you're not a good tattoo artist like if you're not doing realism as much as you would like or as good as you would like or color work as good as you like first get there and then find your niche um another another one that finds we, we've all seen some of the guys that were doing these micro portraits right um we were doing those back in 20 something years ago because no one wanted big tattoos back then um <laughs> So it's kind of like, uh, right, uh, Dylan, this is a good one for you. Uh, uh, how old are you now, Dylan? 29. So Dylan, Dylan, man, he was like six, seven years old when I was doing tattoo parties at his house. I was doing small tattoos back then on your pops and all his friends, right? Yeah, yeah. Those were, the, those were in style back then, right? No one was getting like full yeah, sleeves. Yeah, definitely not. It's like I want a little skull, like, like two like inches. Or shirt or something. Yeah, yeah, like, a, I, like, a, yeah. like a fun small tattoo. So that's... that's that that became a niche and like some of the guys that really did great with that is like ben grillo um or oh, yeah, um, those knuckles he does yeah those finger jams and there and that's a technique on its I, own so y you guys got to really find your niche in today's day and age with tattooing where it's going you got to find a niche you got to do something that sets you apart or you're going to be like everybody else and if you're going to be like everybody else you're going to make a you're going to make a a, a, a a regular paycheck you're gonna make a regular amount of money, and and I'm not saying this is all about the money, but if you're tattooing for a living, it's everyone's goal to have the best type of living they can have, right? Um, but again, it's it's all about that niche, and so again, going back to where we're at today, we're at a pivotal point in tattoo history where some are gonna to fall to the left and some are some are gonna to fall to the right, um, and what that means it's different for everyone but it's it, it becomes success and not success it becomes giving up going up going back to your day job or it becomes you know growing and becoming better and moving on to the next chapter onward and upward with your tattoo career but try to concentrate on building your own personal brand way more than opening up your own studio it's so much easier I'll say it again find your friend that owns a studio find someone that's already stressing out over the bills <laughs> And paying and, and having to run a studio, find someone that's already doing that, and then simply rent a station from him. Um, another thing you can do if you like privacy, gosh, uh, my first studio technically, this was, gosh, maybe like 20, 24, 25 years ago, 26 years ago, really, like a year or two after I started tattooing, I, I rented this little office above the DMV here in Orange County in, in Laguna, Laguna Hills. And it was like a 200 square foot office. They didn't even know I was tattooing. They thought I was doing graphic design. I, they ended up kicking me out when they found out that I was tattooing. Um, but I had this cool balcony that no one ever used. I can go out there and chill with my customers. And uh, at the time I was using rotaries still, so it was quiet. Otherwise, if I was using coils, they would have found out earlier. 
Somebody told on me. I don't know who it was. Maybe a janitor. But anyhow, that was my studio. It was 200 square feet. It was a private office. I had an autoclave. It was fully, fully, uh, fully medical. It was fully safe. Um, everything was good on that note, just in terms of cleanliness and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's another thing is if you if you don't if you're one of those people that doesn't want to work in a busy shop and you can't concentrate. Find a small office. Every single place, every single city has a place you can rent small offices out. James, shoot me another question. Well, we'll get into, uh, we got a couple of product questions for everybody at home, but just to let you guys know, the Bishop website is stocked up with wands. So we've got shaders, packers, liners available. So after the live, make sure you go and check that out. And for the questions, as far as, actually we had a great one right here, just with uh, the second part to the black and gray from our friend Miguel. Um, talking about the black and gray and, and getting it to where it is in realism, what do yeah. you think about people like Thomas Carly Jarlier who are using those opaques and the grays okay. to hit that? So that's a good question. It it, that goes into what I was going to say. Another thing that people are losing sight of is longevity. I'm seeing people tattoo for the now, not the future, and that's a really selfish thing to do. Um, what I mean by that is they know it's not going to last. They know it's not going to um, last more than three years before it fades away, right? Um, and it's because they're using the wrong techniques. Maybe they don't know, maybe no one taught them. Um, the needle has to go a certain depth for it to last. If it goes too deep, it blurs out. If it goes too shallow, it only lasts, it's a surface wound at that point. It starts to fade over three to four years. I remember I was talking to Chewy Quintanar, uh, my homie, and we were talking about how, I think it was like the late 90s, early 2000s, guys like us were, we were trying to achieve the lightest portraits before everyone was doing dark portraits everyone was trying to achieve the lightest portraits like we would be looking at people's work going damn that's nice light tones light soft tones everywhere we were afraid to go dark um and that was a, an experimental years for us because remember to really learn how to tattoo properly to really um become a master you have to see you really have to see how your work heals five years later ten years later if you're lucky 15 years later, if, if you're really lucky 20 plus years later, 25 plus years later, I've seen my work come back 25 years old. It's fucking stuck in the skin, it's there. Um, but there was this period that I'm talking about where we were doing such light portraits that as some of those started coming back five, 10 years later, it's like, oh, I need to touch you up. Like, that's too light. Like, damn, what was that, you know? And, and it was because we weren't going deep enough in the skin. We were skimming the skin. And that's a lot of people are doing that right now. They're skimming the skin, doing black and gray. Um, that's not good because if, if you're not going deep enough, um, you're gonna you're going to um, it's 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 gonna it's gonna jack up. It's it's not gonna heal right. Thomas J. Carlier. Thomas J. Carlier is so he's using black. He's using water to water stuff down, but he's using opaque grays. So it does have this really cool look. But also, when you do that, you have to saturate it because at that point, it's like it's almost like working a color tattoo. You got to saturate those grays in the skin. James, so it's so that's kind of what it is. You have to saturate, and Thomas does a great job of saturation. He saturates a, a really nice black and gray portrait using opaques. That's a that's a style, James. That's a style that he's killing. He's doing great with it. Um, it's still considered black and gray. It's just a different method to achieving gray tones, really. But yeah, his his style, you got to go deep with it. His tattoos will last longer than a lot of other black and gray artists mm -hmm. that are out there. So no skim in the skin, guys, to achieve your light tones. Instead, choose the right tone, go the right depth, like Carlos said. Carlos Torres, he tells people, with every tone, whether it's dark, medium, light, even extra light, he treats it the same. He goes in the same depth. It's like watercoloring. When you watercolor, you use the same brush, you use the same pressure. All you're doing is using different light tones to achieve your gradient. You're not skimming the watercolor paper to make it light. There's two ways to achieve light tones in black and gray. By using the proper tone and going deep enough, or by using maybe a too dark of a tone and you're skimming the skin. Kind of like a ballpoint pen drawing. You don't want to do that one. Okay, well, you know a couple of the questions we're going to ask for all of those at home. We've got two of them. Battery Pack and mm. El Chapo. Battery Pack is 
underway. It's in production. I'm, hopefully, I'll be getting from the factory a couple pictures next week to kind of show the process so I can share it with you guys. Because you know how it is when you're waiting for something and it seems like there's no end in sight and you're waiting and it's like a year, like kind of like me. Like I'm waiting for this damn thing myself. Um, but when you see pictures of like the home being built and you see the framework going up and the drywall and the electricians putting in the lights then you get excited because it's real i want to share that realness with you guys so hopefully next week we'll get some pictures of these little babies in the factory getting born and uh yeah they're underway so um it could be four or five weeks from now that they'll be delivered um hopefully sooner but yeah the good news is finally they're underway everything's been approved and checked off of so yeah, they're coming so stay tuned for the battery pack we're definitely going to be updating you guys and here's the thing guys it's really not a battery pack it's an actual power supply that's battery powered that's really what we're what it is and what we're telling you it is is it's a power supply that's battery powered that's really what it is it's not a battery pack a battery pack is something you can buy on on ebay for 30 bucks this is a power supply fully functioning it works just like a one of your favorite power supplies out there but we'll talk more about that later, just updating on, on the whereabouts. And then secondly, the El Chapo. So, nope, don't have it this week because Dylan had to take it to go do Ooh. some shooting. You okay. rapscallion. Okay, we, <laughs> we gotta tease the people, right? Uh, Dylan, how's it coming along, dude? Are you filming the uh, video for the uh, for the El Chapo? Yep, Ooh. it's coming, it looks, it looks great. I got revisions for you this morning so we're gonna finish yes, that up sir we got the guys building away on them and uh we, we should be launching them next week right i believe maybe? we may maybe be ready. At, the, at the most by the end of next week i think, I think we'll be what? ready maybe, maybe we should do it next friday you know what you have a point there hold on a second you got a point there what do you guys think shall we it's probably a good day to be honest it's probably gonna be ready thursday and if it is we might as well launch it on friday and uh, maybe we'll do something fun. Maybe we'll do some giveaways, um, like like with the the purchase. But uh, there's only about 23 of them available, so act fast because when they're gone, they're gone. Um, what are the prices, James? Do you have them? Uh, no, we are gonna have that factored out uh, okay. this week once everything's all taken care of. And uh, if you message us, send us a DM hey, or instant I think messenger. This is kind of fun. I think Ooh. that at some point in the history, like maybe 50 years from now. I think I think those machines will be worth like twenty, thirty grand. They'll be like collectors' oh, editions. We only we probably only have at the very most at the very most maybe sixty a, a year that we've been doing. It's not a lot, so I would grab say them. one one thing to um, you know if you are really wanting one, we do have our SMS list, our first uh, kind of our VIP okay. list. So I think that would be a great way to get sign up on our SMS list if you guys haven't already. Um, can they go to Facebook to do that? Or uh, you know, what? I think just send a message to Gabe who runs all of the Instant Messenger, and uh, we'll we'll take it from there for you guys. Yeah, sign up sign up on our list because we get we get to those lists uh, and let people know first come first yep. serve. Yep. So we'll let you know when we're dropping it. You guys will all have a at least a couple days heads up and an early up. access. That's what's neat about yeah. that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So jump in there. So um, any questions about the industry, where we're at, where we're going? Are you guys stuck? Who's stuck? Who doesn't know what to do? I'll, I'll give you some free advice right now if you hit me up. Yeah. What the fuck do you want to do? Let me help you. Actually, I, I, actually, I shouldn't cuss. I'm trying not to cuss, okay? I got a question for okay, you. Okay, go ahead, James. What do you see with the future of Bishop Rotary and what it contributes back to the tattoo industry? That's a good question. Okay. Um, so again, it goes back to one of my favorite stories. Uh, we've all heard of Red Bull, right? So we and we read tons of marketing books. So there's this, there's this, there's this saying where they're like, Red Bull doesn't consider themselves a, a, a an energy drink company. They're a marketing company. They're a media company that happens to sell uh, energy drinks. And I like the way that was posed because they're a media company that happens to sell energy drinks. That means there's so much more than just a freaking Red Bull, uh, give me some energy, put some vodka in there so I can get effed up. Yeah. It's there's so much more. And 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 we're kind of the same way where we're not we're not just a tattoo company. We're not just a tattoo machine company. We're, we don't just make tattoo supplies. We actually tell stories. We tell stories, we 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 capture history, we shed light on what's going on in the industry. But again, we're storytellers, and that's if you've seen some of our videos, we, we do, we've done great stories on Carrie Barba. We're working on a great one with Gilmani right now. Um, eventually, you know, we would like to be known as 
history keepers, right? The, ga the gatekeepers the of history, legacy. We're preserving tattoo legacy. We're contributing to the industry uh, versus taking from the industry. Um, it's my it's it's my strong vision that, that artists will start to see the um, the need to support companies that are contributing to the industry. I'm not the only one, so I would say, you know, contributing to the industry is huge for us because we're tattoo artists. I'm a tattoo artist. This is a tattoo artist brand company. Um, I encourage everyone to support and buy from tattoo artist owned companies because you're going to get the real deal. Um, but in general, like that's who we are. I think where we're going, Bishop, um, we're going to tell more stories. We got Tom, we got Dylan. These are our master storytellers right here. Storytellers! <laughs> And we want to just share all the things that I've seen throughout the years with everyone. There's so many stories that, like, we still have, like, Meeting of the Masters we filmed with Cartoon and yeah. Baby Ray and Nico and Steve Soto. And, like, like we have so many things that we want to share with you guys. Because as big as the tattoo world is, it's up to companies like us to go out and travel to different countries and film and tell stories. I like Vice. I like the Vice Network. I feel like Bishop's kind of like got that vice flavor where we're going out and you know telling the stories yeah. so that everyone can know because a lot of thing a lot of the things a lot of the stories that we come across like like Southpaw right that's a great inspirational story the one armed tattoo artist is which like, he's been on here and says hello yeah, checking in yeah. he's excited like like people didn't know that he existed and James discovered him and I was like floored by his story of, of overcoming tragedy and. Uh, and we shared his story with the world, and, and it really changed a lot of people's lives. Probably thousands of people's lives were changed when they heard that story. Absolutely. Um, as, a, as a company, as a product developer, yeah, we're always going to be staying on the cutting edge of developing the best products. Um, we're always going to be customer service oriented. If you guys know, you know how we are. We're, we're, we're a different breed. Like, customers are number one to us. Um, at the end of the day... We'll go. We'll go out of our way to make you happy. Um, we love. We love treating everybody equal, right? Again, knowledge is power. We want to share knowledge with you guys, so we want to contribute back to the industry, which is what this is. Um, and and again, we want to be on the ground floor with you guys. You guys can send me a DM. I I probably talk to at least 10, 15 people a day. I get behind a lot. So if you're DMing me and you're not and you're wondering why I'm not getting back to you, hit me up again. If you don't hear from me, hit me up again. Um, I always seem to get to those people first, and I see them. Like, oh, okay, that's that guy hitting me up again. Review. So a lot of people say like, review my work and give me some pointers and whatnot. I'm down for that. I've given thousands of pointers over the years. Just send me a DM. I'll look at your work and I'll give you some some feedback. Um, if you want, if you want to know what machine's right for you, send me a DM. I'll, I'll check your work out. I'll give you my feedback. So that's really where we're going, James. We're, we're going to be going more towards the front lines with you guys and really helping you guys um, become better at everything when it, when it comes to marketing when it comes to um, you know technique and understanding rotary machines ins and outs of everything so we're going deep all of our episodes are deep um, it's time it's time we talk about this stuff it's time we dive deep it's time we it's time that we unpack all these goodies and share them with you guys we're not giving away tattoo knowledge. We're not helping people that don't deserve. Like, well, like we're not helping, as you guys say, scratchers. We're not helping people that are that, that it's unfair to help. Um, we're not giving away that kind of knowledge. We're giving away knowledge for you professionals. We're giving away knowledge for you guys and girls that are already professional, that are already kicking butt, uh, but you just want to become better. You want to become better. Knowledge is power. That's how you do it. Everything's about knowledge. It's like your little brain, or big brain, depends on how big your brain is. It's a filing cabinet. And there's three layers. Your conscious, your subconscious, and your, sub, your super subconscious. And each of those has filing cabinets. And really, at the end of the day, what makes Eminem freestyle like a beast? He's, he's, his filing cabinets are loaded with the craziest shit. What makes uh, Nico tattoo like a beast? Portrait colors, color portrait work. His filing cabinet is, is just full. He knows how to use a, 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 a nine round shader. He knows how to blend red into dark red into black. It's just all about knowledge and what you put in there. So like what we wanna do every Friday, if you guys are tuning in, we're, we're giving away like papers to put into your filing cabinets. All you gotta do is listen, and if you apply, then it becomes real, and then it becomes subconscious, and you never forget. 
which is why you don't want to build bad habits. They take a long time to undo. James, we got uh, we got about five minutes. Five we got more a, minutes. Any other questions? Um, no, not not anything off the top. Just a lot of people checking in. They've gotten their new machines. Everybody's cool. really excited. Been using their wands. Um, a lot of people are giving us wonderful feedback uh, cool. for these uh, Facebook Fridays and whatnot. Yeah. So let me, you guys get those questions. If you have any topics, also send us a message, whether uh, Instagram yeah. or uh, Facebook Messenger. And, send. and thank you guys for that. Well, I'm, I know we're getting a lot of questions yeah. a, uh, after these episodes. We're trying, we're trying to get them as much as we can. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a big team getting to these questions, including myself. Um, so send the questions and, and we're, we're going to answer them. But Maybe I'll spend a minute. Okay, oh, I, I do got one. When okay. are you going to do a seminar? Well, we were planning on doing a seminar, and then uh, this COVID stuff happened. But once things get back to normal, I will be putting on a seminar. It'll be a little different. Well, a lot different than anything you guys have ever seen. It'll be myself. Um, I'm going to invite some some special guests. Um, I won't say no names, but there'll be big special guests. Um, I'll be teaching tattoo techniques. But even more than that, I'll be really diving deep with rotaries, right? So if you take one of my seminars that I'll be doing here at headquarters, you'll you'll kind of leave being kind of a master at understanding rotary machines and, and what they do and why you like and dislike different things about them. Um, techniques to make you a better tattoo artist. It's more philosophy. It's more... Uh, it, there's there's it's it, again going back to what I said last week. Eighty percent of great tattoos is not is is knowledge and mind power. Twenty percent is technique. So we'll be diving deep into that stuff. And then special guests, of course. How did these guys make it? So um, that's stay tuned for that. Uh, we're at the mercy of the world getting back to a, a normal a normal place. But thank you guys also for supporting us, buying our equipment. Thank you guys and girls who are buying our machines. Um, we, we really appreciate the, the success of the wand. I really, really wanted to make that machine different than anything out in the market, and you guys have confirmed that by all your awesome feedback. We, we live by your feedback, so doesn't matter who you are, your feedback is valuable. We, see, we pretty much see it all, so, and we pretty much try to comment on everything. So thank you guys for your support. It just fuels our fire to do more and to make better and to keep delivering state-of-the-art uh, products for you guys to do what you do. Yeah, I mean, again, thank you for everybody who tuned in at home. Uh, those who were asking about the Bishop Wands, they are available now on Bishop Rotor, BishopTattooSupply.com. Yep, if you guys are looking for a wand, they're available right now. There's a there's a limited amount of them that we uploaded today. Grab them, because I think by tomorrow afternoon, they may be gone. <laughs> yeah, they just may. That seems to be the trend these days. Well, Franco, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. You guys, thank you all at home. We really look forward to your guys' questions, so please send them to us, and we one, we'll get them addressed here, but two, we'd like to start up some new topics and have you guys a little bit more interactive. Um, Franco, again, as always. Thank you, always, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Dylan, for your awesome working the cameras. Yeah, we've got a great team. We hope to bring a lot more interactive um, experience for you all at home. So thank you again Good for luck. tuning in. We love and appreciate you guys. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And remember, if nobody loves you, Bishop's got you. And Chuko, we out. <laughs>